I'm going to be discussing care of the client with a myocardial infarction. At the conclusion of this video, the nurse should be able to identify the appropriate care for a client with myocardial infarction. In order to give appropriate care, the nurse needs to know how to differentiate an MI from angina and must know medications, streptokinase, TPA, beta blockers, morphine sulfate, antidysrhythmics, and anticoagulants. I'm going to start with assessment. Symptoms vary depending on whether pain, shock, or pulmonary edema dominates the clinical picture. Chest pain radiating to arms, jaw, neck, back. The pain will be unrelieved by rest or nitroglycerin and is often described as crushing, prolonged, or severe. Dyspnea, indigestion with nausea, vomiting, and discomfort. Apprehension and anxiety, restlessness, feeling of impending doom or impending death, low-grade fever, which will start within 24 hours after the MI and last for about 3 to 7 days. You will also see elevated WBCs, leukocytes, within 2 days after the MI and it can remain elevated for up to 1 week. Elevated ESR. The CK and MB is the first enzyme to be elevated after the MI, appears about 3 to 6 hours after, and peaks at about 18 to 24 hours after. EKG changes. ST segment can be elevated, T wave inversion, and Q wave formation. Acute pulmonary edema, a sense of suffocating. Gray facial coloring. Let's talk about implementation or how you're going to provide care to clients with an MI. Thrombolytic therapy, streptokinase, TPA, dissolves the thrombus. It has to be given within six hours of onset of the MI. Bed rest, beta blockers, which will decrease the heart rate, hold if the heart rate is less than 60, and be aware that bronchospasm is a serious side effect of beta blockers. Morphine sulfate, which will decrease the preload and afterload and help with the pain. Antidysrhythmics and anticoagulants. Monitor vital signs in I and O. Too much fluid can exacerbate congestive heart failure, and too little can cause dehydration. Monitor for oligoria. Monitor activity level. The highest risk of reinfarction is sedentary lifestyle. You want to talk to them about the fact that they have to have a certain level of activity, and rehab would be very helpful. Teaching will be stopping smoking, reduce stress, decrease caffeine, dietary changes and regular physical activity. Now we have your practice question. The nurse cares for the client diagnosed with myocardial infarction. Which is the correct rationale for the nurse administering a stool softener to the client? To avoid straining, which may exacerbate the cardiac condition, as a substitute for coffee to facilitate evacuation, to avoid constipation, which is an added annoyance, allows the nurses to more accurately keep track of the output. We're looking for the rationale for the nurse administering a stool softener to a client that has had an MI. One is correct. We want to avoid straining. Performing the Valsalma maneuver and straining can result in bradycardia with rebound hypertension. Myocardial infarction is the formation of localized necrotic areas within the myocardium, usually following the sudden occlusion of a coronary artery and the abrupt decrease of blood and oxygen to the heart muscle. We discussed the signs and symptoms of an MI, and we also discussed the implementations. Two is not correct. Caffeine is a stimulant that facilitates defecation, but stool softeners solely facilitate defecation by softening the stool. They make it easier to pass. Three, we want to avoid constipation, but the fact that it's an annoyance is not the reason. We talked about the reason. We want them to be able to have a bowel movement without straining or four, allows the nurse to more accurately keep track of the output. Measuring stools is not a necessity.